So it's Monty Python's Flying Circus. <laughs> well, okay, actually it's not, but just so you know, this is where the Python language got its name, right? It's from the comedy troupe, not the snake. Okay, but today's talk will be about OOP, or Object-Oriented Programming, uh, in Python. And I'm Jin Si, I'm a second year student from the Singapore University of Technology and Design, currently in the Computer Science slash Info Systems major. And I'm also currently an intern at Tickerbox, and in fact, it is my fellow intern and tech lady, Fania K, who invited me to speak here today, so I'm glad to be here. So now I understand that most of the audience here are kind of like beginner level, so like, just, just to get a gauge, how many of you guys have done like OOP in Python before? Okay, so I, I would say that for those who have not done anything, I hope that at the end of this talk, you'll get to understand more about what OOP is about. Okay, so I would say OOP is like an, kind of like an intermediate level topic, but it's a very key topic for you to understand for you to go on to do more advanced stuff. So this is why I chose the topic for today. But it's also a very broad topic, so I don't know how much I can cover in 20 minutes. So forgive me if I speak too fast or I'll skip over certain things. Okay? So, just a brief overview of what I'll be talking about. I'll mainly be covering like more like nuts and bolts of OOP in Python. So language-specific constructs, syntax, that sort of thing. Because I believe for beginners, this is what you would be more interested in. But at the same time, I hope to be able to talk a little bit about what we call object-oriented design, right? principles of writing good code with, with, uh, with yeah, design principles, basically. So um, before I actually go into the actual material, I have a confession to make. So the sad truth is, okay, maybe it's not that sad, but the truth is that I, I probably enjoy you know, drawing silly things more than I like programming. So as a result, you'll see a lot of silly drawings uh, Probably more silly drawings than code in this talk, but it is my hope that you know. Oh dear. It is my hope that you know it will sort of give you a visual aid to understanding the concepts that I'll be talking about. Okay, so let's dive right in. The nuts and bolts. So these are the topics I'll be covering: objects, classes and instances, attributes and methods, inheritance and scope. And if those words have completely flown over your head, do not fear. By the end of this talk, you should hopefully have a rough idea of what they mean. So let's jump straight into the first... Oh wait, sorry. Before that, I just want to make it clear that uh, in common use right now, there are two main Python versions, so Python 2 and Python 3. There are some differences between the two versions. So as beginners, it can be easy to trip up over these differences. So I just, just to be clear that when you read out resources online, for example, you should, you should know what versions those resources are talking about which Python version I'm talking about. So for, for clarification, just to be clear, I'm using Python 3 for all my examples here. Alright, so objects. So think of objects as a way of logically encapsulating your code, right? So objects have what we call attributes and methods. So let's look at this, this document over here. So I like to think of attributes as kind of like adjectives or properties. So for example, we say the dog is white or it can have a weight of 7 kg. So these are like the attributes of the dog. On the other hand, methods, they're kind of more like verbs. So a dog can wag its tail, can bark. So these are things that a dog can do. So these are like the methods of my dog object. So you know in Python, so this is a slightly layman-ish description, but I hope can kind of bring across the intuitive feel of what I mean by attributes and methods. And in fact, you know in Python, you have your variables and your functions, right? So your attributes and methods are actually just your good old friends, your variables and your functions. The only thing is that attributes are kind of like variables that are associated with a certain object and methods are functions that are associated with a certain object. So in the end, objects, uh, objects is basically a way of coupling data in the form of attributes with functions or procedures in the form of methods. Okay, so let's look at this dot transcribed into real Python code. So um, for those who have not done any OOP in Python before this, the syntax might look slightly intimidating, but hopefully at the end of it, you'll be able to understand what's going on. Okay, so the kind of object-oriented programming in Python that we're dealing with is called class-based object-oriented programming, right? But this is the kind of OOP that you'll find in languages like Ruby, Java, C Sharp, etc. And it's probably the most popular kind of OOP, but just so you know, there are other kinds out there. So class-based OOP. So you see here that I'm defining this class dot. So you should know by now that in Python, in that, uh, indentation is syntactically significant. So all this indented code, this is inside the class body. Okay, so this is my class definition. Okay, now I'm talking about classes. And now I have to talk about, uh, explain about classes and instances because we're talking about class-based OOP. So what 
are classes and instances. So think of a class as a kind of thing, a category. Okay, whereas the instance is more like this particular living example of that kind of thing. So you know, uh, to, to drive the point across, let me talk about babies. Yes, yes, babies. Okay, when you think of a baby, right, a human baby, you kind of have this conception, this platonic idea of what a baby should look like. You know, this sweet, tender, angel, angelic thing. So that's kind of like a class. You know, it's like this general category, this general idea. Whereas if you actually see this real living, kicking, screaming, peeing, pooping baby, and you're like, oh, what's this ugly Yoda-like thing? That, that's kind of like an instance. That's a real concrete instance of a baby. Okay, so I hope that kind of brings across the idea of what's the difference between a class and an instance. Okay, so let's go back to the code. And in my class, so in this class definition, right, when I define my class, you can think of it as defining a custom data type. So we know in Python, we have our built-in types, we have integers, we have strings, we have lists, we have dictionaries. When you define a class, it's as if you're building your own data type, right? And this own data type, is a, it has its own, own attributes and its own methods. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will go through the stuff in here later, but let me go down to the code here. So what you see down here, this line, line 13, this is where I instantiate, uh, I create instance of my class. So I'm assigning, I'm creating an uh, instance called doggy, right? And this is the way I construct the instance, by calling the, what we call the class constructor. So this is the class name, the parentheses, I pass in, what we call, I pass in certain arguments to initialize my instance. So now I have this doggy, doggy which is an instance of the dog class. Okay, so now that we sort of know what classes and instances are, let me go back I'll start going through the code in here. So to, to understand the code in here, we have to talk about attributes and methods. So when we talk about attributes and methods, right, there are generally two kinds. There can be instance attributes and instance methods, or there can be class attributes and class methods. But for now, I'll be talking about instance attributes and instance methods because that's what we usually deal with. Okay, so inside this class body, I've defined several methods for my dog class. So these are how you, just like how you define functions. I mean, methods are just functions, right? But they're inside a class. So this is how I define my methods. And you notice that, you notice that uh, this first method looks kind of special as the double underscores in front. So double underscore in it, double underscore. So I'll be talking more about this later, but let's look at these two function, uh, these two methods first. Now, you'll notice something interesting about these two methods. I mean, in the end, these methods are just stuff that they print something to the console, right? You're just going to print web, web, or woof, woof. But there's something interesting about this in that in the method signature, I'm actually taking in this parameter self. And this self is actually an indication to you that these methods are instance methods. Okay, so we can invoke these instance methods by using this dot syntax over here. So I invoke wagtail by calling doggy.wagtail. And this is, and it just, be, just to emphasize that you have to put the parentheses there to invoke the method. Right? In Python, putting the parentheses there is important. So when I invoke the method, I use this dot syntax, and I write the method name, and I put the parentheses. So when I invoke those methods, they'll print wag wag or woof woof to the console. OK, so let me talk a little bit more about that self parameter. Why is it there? You know, this is slightly different from normal functions, right? Because in a normal function, when you define a function, you define it with a set of parameters. It takes, like, let's say, three parameters. When you invoke that function, you, you, should give, you should have to pass in three arguments. So in this case, I take first, second, and third parameters. And when I invoke this function, I pass in three arguments. Okay, Three parameters, three arguments. That's how it normally works. But if you notice here, when I invoke these functions, these methods, even though I'm taking in this self-parameter, somehow I'm not passing anything in. Right, that, that seems a bit strange. So, for me to, for you guys to understand what's going on, I need to talk a bit more about this, this magical self. Okay, what is this about? So, uh, when we, at the end of this, you actually realize that the self is not magical. The magic is not in the self. Okay. The the thing is when you, when when you call these methods, invoke these methods like this, 
what Python actually does is under the hood, it's passing in to the method the instance that calls the method. So for example, when I call doggy.wagtail, it's passing in this doggy instance into my wagtail method. And it's passing that, that instance into the self parameter. So in fact, my self parameter is actually referencing this doggy instance. And at this point, it may not be obvious because in my methods, I'm not doing anything with the self, right? I'm not doing anything with it. But I'll modify the method later to show you what, how I can actually access that self parameter. But for now, I realize that these methods, they're actually what we call bound methods in Python. So they are methods that are bound to a specific instance. Okay, so this method, this wagtail method, if I print out, print out this method, so notice I'm printing this method out. I'm not putting the parentheses behind, so I'm not calling the method. This is the method object. Okay, in Python, everything's an object. So even methods are objects. So I'm printing out this method, and it tells me that it's actually a bound method. Right, is this bound method dot dot wagtail of this particular instance of dot. Okay, so let's modify the bug method so that I'm doing something more interesting with self. So you now see here that I'm actually accessing this self dot color and self dot weight. So I'm accessing these attributes that belong to that instance. And now instead of printing just woof woof, it will print like woof woof. I'm white and I weigh seven kg because white because I when I initialize this doggy, I pass in white. I initialize it with a white color and I initialize it with seven kg of weight. Okay, so this is what you can do with that self parameter. So if you've come from a language like, say, Ruby, you might be inclined to think, hey, there's something special going on with the self here, right? So this is the equivalent code in Ruby, and it does the exact same thing. And in Ruby, you can actually call this, you can also do this self.color, self.weight thing. But I want to say that the self in Ruby and the self in Python are very different. So in Ruby, the self is actually a keyword. It's built into the language. In Python, let's see what happens if so originally I had this, right? I had this bug method. Let's see what happens if I do this. You know what? It still works. Okay, so it's not the stuff that's magical. The magical thing is the first parameter that the method accepts. I can name it whatever I want, and it will work. So you can name it the most ridiculous things you want, and it will work. Okay, but the only reason we call it self is because of Python convention. It's a very strong convention. So you're not going to see code like this, uh, okay? No, no one's going to write code like this. So when people write code like this, are uh, probably trolls. Okay, but I'm, I'm here to teach you to write Python not to be a troll. So you know, if you write code like this, people are going to look at you like that. You don't want that, okay? Okay, so just the upshot at the end of the day is make sure your self is there. Your self should be, that self parameter should always be there, right, for all your instance methods. Okay, what if, what if I don't define the self? So you see what happens, Python actually throws an error. Because Python is still passing in the instance into the method. But you're saying your method doesn't take any parameters, so it gets an error, okay? All right, so now I've done, I'm done talking about instance methods. Let me talk about instance attributes. So this is where I come back to this first interesting, uh, interesting method over here. So the init method is what we call the constructor. So the constructor is the thing that initializes our class. So when you when I created this dogged instance, I initialized it with this data, right? White color, seven kg, and this is where I actually set my data. So remember, like I said, self refers to the instance. Self dot color refers to the color of the instance. So I'm setting the self dot color to the color that I pass into the constructor, right? And when you see this double underscore thing going on in Python, it's what we call magic uh, magic method. So Python has quite a long list of this, but the init method is probably the most common because it's the class constructor. And so you notice for attributes, right, I can also read them through dot syntax, so I can print the doggy's color. And I can also assign to them through dot syntax, so I can assign doggy dot color equals to brown, and when I print the color out again, now it prints brown instead of white. Okay, now that I'm done talking about instance attributes and instance methods, what's left next is class attributes and class methods. So what's the difference? So the main thing is that when we talk about instance attributes and methods, we are talking about data procedures that deal with that specific particular instance. So like each dot has its own color, has its own weight, right? Each dot can bug and wag its tail. But there are certain things, certain kind of data that is class-wide, right? It's not specific to one particular dot. So those, would, those kind of data would make sense to store in a class, a class attribute, for example, okay? So what, what, kind of, what kind of attribute would that be? So 
how about the threshold weight over which a dog is considered obese? Okay, that, that is not specific to any one dog, right? It's a class-wide thing. So this is something that will make sense to store as a class attribute. And it's, a, it's an important thing to know, right? Yeah, okay, he agrees. Okay, so that's, this is how we initialize our class attribute. Okay, it's just like assigning a normal variable, but this is inside the class body. So I've created this uh, obese weight class attribute, set it to 30. And so I have this instance method here called check obese, and I can access this class attribute within my instance method through this. So self, remember self again is just the, the instance. Self dot class refers, so this class, right, it refers to the class to which the instance belongs. In this case, it's the dog class. So this is as good as writing dog dog obese weight. But you shouldn't hard code dog dog obese weight directly because that will make your code less maintainable. Because like, let's say one day you want to change the class name, then you have to hunt down all the places where you hard coded the name in. Right? So this is why you always should reference it through self dot class. Okay, that's about it for class attributes. There's some, there are more subtle stuff about than that, but I don't have time. So let me talk a bit about class methods. So this is how the syntax of writing class methods. Okay, you have to write this add class method thing. So this is what we call a decorator. You have this add class method decorator, and then you define your method. So just like how your instance methods took in the first parameter self, your class methods have to take in this first parameter class, or CLS. Right? It's the same thing. So you call instance methods on an instance, right? You call class methods on the class. So here, when I call my class method, I'm calling it on <coughs> dot, big, big dot. Right. Dog, dog info. This dog is my class. And you see what my class method is doing is basically kind of printing information that has to do with the class, not with any specific instance of it. Alright, now I shall try to talk about inheritance. This is kind of a really big topic in uh, object-oriented programming. So let's look at this small family tree here. When we talk about inheritance, we talk, tend to talk about what we call an is a relationship. Okay, so a chihuahua is a dog, a Bernese mountain dog is a dog. So the point of inheritance is kind of like to abstract out the commonalities of similar things and to put it in what we call the base or the parent class. So this dog is my, my base or parent class. And I have, I can create these child or subclasses, right, that will extend the parent class and they will add on their own stuff to the parent, to the parent class. So for example, we have many different dog breeds. And it doesn't make sense for all dog breeds to have the same obese weight threshold. Agree? So we can create these child classes that specify the obese weight for that specific dog breed. So in my parent class, remember I specified the obese weight to be 30. But obviously chihuahuas, if, you know, if they're above 5, then it's problematic already, right? So I can override the parent class attribute over here and specify that for chihuahuas, you're overweight if you're over 5 kg. But for Bernese mountain dogs, I mean those are huge dogs. Overweight if you're over 55 kg. Okay, so that's kind of like what you can do with inheritance. And notice that I'm not specifying anything else in my class. I'm just specifying this obese weight thing. And yet, when I instantiate this chihuahua here, my chihuahua still can bark. And this barking, it came from the parent dog class. Because all dogs can bark, right? So whether you're a chihuahua or a Bernese mountain dog, you should still be able to bark. You should, be, you should still be able to check whether you're obese. Okay, this is stuff that is inherited from the parent. Okay, not only can you override attributes, you can also override methods. So for example, you know chihuahuas, I mean they don't really bark, okay, they, they just they kind of squeak, right? They're so small. So if I want to override the bark method in my, sorry, my parent dog class, I can basically just define a method with the exact same signature. Right? So and in this case it does something different. Instead of printing woof woof, it prints squeak squeak. So this is how I override methods in my parent class. And now you might be thinking, okay. Sometimes I want to override methods, but sometimes I still want some functionality from the parent class, and I want to add on more of my own stuff. So this is what we call extending the parent, uh, parent class methods. So you can do that by first invoking the parent method and then adding on your own stuff. So for example, let's say chihuahuas, they have, you have chihuahuas that have long fur, you have chihuahuas that have short fur. So when you initialize a chihuahua, you not only want, know, want, want to know its age, its weight and its color, but you also want to know its hair length. But in the parent dog class, we only initialize the age and weight and the color. So what you can do is you can actually invoke the parent class constructor. And this is what this super line is doing here. So this super dot init, color, age, weight, this is calling the parent class constructor. And the parent class constructor only deals with color, age, and weight. And then after that, I add on whatever class specific, subclass specific stuff. So for chihuahuas, I want to set the hair length as well. So this is how we can extend parent methods. 
Okay, so this is my last topic, almost there. So scope. This is where I also talk a bit more about some object-oriented design principles. Okay, scope. So when we talk about object or objects, right? When we talk about interactions between objects, we, we tend to talk about it in terms of what we call message passing. Okay, so when, when objects communicate, they pass messages, and they pass messages by calling methods on other objects. So, for example, this dog, I can send a wet tail message to this dog, and he will wet his tail. So, the only the messages that I should be able to send to this dog are messages that belong to its public interface. Okay, there's, the, the dog presents an interface that you can interact with, but the dog also has its own internals that only itself knows. Like, you shouldn't be able to touch it. So imagine, right? Imagine if to get a dog to wag its tail, you know, instead of saying nicely to it, hey, please wag your tail, you know, I actually went and grabbed his brain and tried to stimulate the motor nerve directly to wag its tail. I mean, you don't do that, right? It's like you're like molesting the dog, okay? So it's the same thing with your, when you write code. You, you, you try not to touch the internals of the object. You, you try to design, you try to think about how you're supposed to design a public interface that the object presents to everything else. So for example, when you, when you tell the dog, hey, wag your tail, the dog's brain will take the information, process it, and at the end of the day, eventually it will wag its tail. But however, how the hell it processes the information, you don't have to care. You shouldn't care. You don't want to care. Okay? So that's the idea. Even when you write your code, or when you use other people's code, when you use libraries, for example, the libraries present an API to you that you have learned how to use. You don't have to care about how the internals of the library work really works. Okay, unless you know, you're actually like, contributing to the library. It's a different thing. Okay. Now, real code. Uh, this will be a bit brief. So the way we can scope our methods or attributes, the way we can declare whether something is part of the public interface or whether something is considered private, in Python it's purely through how we name our, our, our attributes or methods. So for example here, I've actually defined this private method. And how I know it's private, it's purely by the name. Because this name has this double underscore in front. Right. So I, should, I, only, I can only call private methods from within the class itself. So I can call this tail speed method within my wet tail method. So in this case, self dot tail speed. I'm invoking this tail speed method. Okay, but if I try to call tail speed outside, so if I directly try to invoke it here, Python's going to show an error. It's going to say that it doesn't exist. Okay, because you shouldn't be able to touch private methods. Okay, but the okay, not so it looks like your stuff, your method is well protected here, right? Okay, but the truth is, there's no real privacy. If you really, really wanted to, you could actually still go and touch the method. Right? I won't go through exactly how you can do it now, but. The truth is that this kind of privacy, the only thing that's enforcing this kind of privacy is convention. It's purely convention. So, okay, I'll skip that. So if we see methods or attributes with this kind of name, don't touch them. Like, you know, don't don't mess around with them. That's the idea. It's purely by convention that people say if I write, if I name my stuff like that, they're private. Okay? So just just to bring across the point. So imagine you're like this annoying developer kid, right? And like you see this method with the underscore in front of like, ooh, what does this method do when you go and try to poke it? I'm just saying that there's a reason that, that the underscore's in front, okay? So you have been warned, and if, if you've been warned and you still want to play with it, then you get hurt. So no nothing good really comes about from violating this kind of strong conventions. Like, like your code will get messy, trying to, and yeah, it, it, it's kind of hard to bring across the idea now, but it's something that you experience when you start writing code. Okay, so, and people will look at you like that. Okay. It's not fun. Okay, I'm about done. So just to wrap up, because I understand that Dina is going to be talking to you guys about Django, I'll just show you some real work quote from Django. And a disclaimer, I've not touched Django at all before. So this is blatantly stolen from the Django documentation. But I just want to show you that with this basic understanding of object-oriented programming, it's not that hard to understand how this kind of code works. So even for me, who I've, I've never touched Django before. I can sort of understand how this works. So this. These are some Django models. So Django is a, a model view controller web framework. Okay, so models are a way of storing our data. So you see that these are just classes, right? Class reporter, class article. And these classes, they inherit from Django's models.model. And this models.model is imported from the models module of the Django library. Okay, so how we, how we store the model fields, right? Model store data, they have fields. So we store them as class attributes. So this full name is a class attribute. And this class attribute actually assigned, is assigned an instance of all these field classes. So this character field, date field, text field, 
right? I'm actually instantiating, I'm actually creating instances of this class, these classes over here, and I'm assigning them to the class attribute of the model. And not only can we uh, assign class attributes, we can also define instance methods. So this underscore underscore string is another magic method in Python, which allows you to define the string representation of your object. So when I print out a reported object, it's going to print the full name of the reporter instead of the default, which is the like, which is like the, which is like the memory address of the object. Yes, and that is about all. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much. Uh, she'll be hanging out uh, after the event. You can also ask her any questions. Or if you have any questions that you.